Hey everyone, welcome to On Hand Art. My name is Brett. It is so great to see you. I'm asking the question, can we turn humble dryer lint into fine art? Along the way, we're going to paint with wire, and we're also going to make a frame to suspend this whole piece. Follow along, and as always, steal these ideas and techniques for your own amazing artwork. Let's get started. What you're looking at is paper I made recently, and I'll be using it as my canvas. Now, while you're seeing how I made it, I'll link to the full short in the comments. I don't know, full short? That doesn't sound like it should make sense. Anyway, this paper is durable, but I want to line it so I can eventually suspend it. So I'll shape the edges a little, and since I'm out of fabric glue, I'll use the last of my Mod Podge to glue this scrap of cloth to the back of the paper. We'll return to this when it's dry. In the meantime, let's turn this old crate side into a frame to suspend the final work. But once I found a couple of good pieces without too many splits or knots, I used my oscillating cutter to rip them in half. And I'm knocking off the edges and adding some curves to them to give them a fun, kind of wonky edge to match the paper. Then I smoothed everything with some 80 grit paper and my palm sander before filling the holes with wood filler. And while that wood filler sets up and with my paper dry, I can cut off the extra cloth. And this is actually also a good time to start painting it. And I'm picturing a cheerful piece, so I'm just going to paint a simple light blue background. With that set aside to dry, I'm going to make the base for my frame by cutting a section from this post that fell down in my backyard. Now, I thought I could use a handsaw and that would somehow work, but then I remembered I have electricity for a reason and switched to my oscillating cutter. And the trick is to not hit my camera. Then it's just some more wood filler to smooth out those ends, fill in the cracks and holes, and then I can sand it smooth. To finish the frame, I'm using a template I made, and that will help me measure how far apart I want those uprights. Then I can measure where to cut the upper crossbar to length, while also marking where to cut the uprights to inset that crossbar. I'm only notching the uprights so the crossbar sits proud of it. That's just an aesthetic decision, not structural. In fact, I'm simply screwing these pieces together because the base will complete that whole structure, making it much stronger. Now, I'm no woodworker, so I have three power tools I go to. My 30-year-old Dremel, which I've actually recently replaced, my little palm sander, and my oscillating cutter. Now, if you're looking to get started with limited funds, I would say to start with a rotary tool other than the Dremel brand. A lot of my art is making it up as I go along. For example, as I drilled out these slots, that meant using a spade bit, a regular half-inch drill bit, and a chisel. I held the frame in with construction adhesive, making sure it was as square as could be, and allowing time for it to dry before filling in any gaps. Then a good sanding before wiping it down with a damp cloth to get all the dust off before putting on the finish. For the finish, I'm experimenting using a 25% acrylic paint to 75% water wash. While it's still wet, I'm also dropping paint onto the wood glue areas and gently brushing it in to kind of blend it all in and hide the wood filler. With all that prep out of the way, I can get onto the actual image of the piece. I'm measuring off the template you saw earlier and just kind of loosely plotting the points of my lines. This is where I never expect measurements to be exact and I just adjust as I go. But once I get the holes in place, I'll add the background painting. Now I think the colors turned out a little more childlike than conveying the sense of joy that I'm going for, but leave a comment and let me know what you think. And now this is where we're going to paint with wire. Now, I subscribe to the idea that while you're creating, art is an experiment. It's time to explore different materials, techniques, and concepts. So you don't need to go into a piece knowing how to make everything or even what it will look like in the end. And you don't need to feel that painting means actually using paint. Just focus on what you want to share and dive in. Now, as you saw, all the wires are essentially big staples, but the flowers are made from a scrap of aluminum roof flashing. It takes pencil lines nicely, and you can cut it with a regular pair of scissors. And it only partially holds acrylic paint, which means turning that into an opportunity for some tone and texture. And then the stems are coils of copper wire capped with paint. Now, a few taps with a nail will put a hole in the dead center, and I can slide the stem in and coil it on the back to secure it. Then it's just slide them in place and hot glue them on. To suspend it in the frame, I reinforced the corners with some grommets, and then I added points to paracord to feed it through. A little more heat will ball the end of that paracord so it doesn't pull back through, and then I can hang it on the frame. Just remember while you're using heat in paracord to have a lot of ventilation. That stuff smells nasty. I'm not using any adhesives, I'm just wrapping this in wire and then using some more heat to melt the paracord to itself, and that will hold everything in place. 
And after a little adjusting and finagling, I'm done and I can show you the final piece. Well, I hope I gave you some ideas for techniques and materials that you can use to make your own vision come to life. But if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing. Not only would that mean a lot to me, I'd love to have you as part of the On Hand Art community. And if you like this video, I'll leave a link to one that YouTube thinks you'll also like. But thanks for watching and remember, you are creative.